Welcome to the P3 Show. My name is Romeo Von Herman, and uh, our show begins today with uh, Town Meeting Day. It has been a historic Town Meeting Day that we've had this past Tuesday, and boy, oh boy, a lot of things happened. It was very, very invigorating, very lively. A lot of people showed up, but before I begin on that, I want to thank uh, fellow Burlingtonians, all residents who took part of this past town meeting day. It has been an incredible town meeting day, and our show will be based on today uh, about town meeting day, being the first show of uh, the, the P3 show, the, which means the people power on politics. Why did we launch this show? It is because we need to provide, or at least want to make sure that a voice where a community can talk is provided through uh, this show and discuss what matters to the city, what matters to the residents, what matters to uh, citizens of Burlington, uh, the lawmakers, the decision makers, businesses, as well as everybody who calls Burlington home. One of the key reasons why we're launching this show is to make sure that you have a voice and that you're able to see some of the key issues that are discussed. So at the top of the hour, what we're going to be focusing on, again, as I said, as said at the beginning, will be town meeting day and how uh, democracy worked and uh, the level of participation. This past town meeting day was a very historic one. We had uh, two uh, women that were running, our first female mayor elect, and of course we do have, uh, we did have rather, uh, two men that participated in this uh, past election, mayoral election. We had an incredibly amazing uh, city council runs as well, both incumbent and new city councilors that were running. So it was a fantastic, to say the least, and I went to the polls myself. Uh, I was at uh, um, uh, Ward 2 and Ward 3 polling station. Uh, boy, oh boy, I was there from 8 a.m. to nearly 6.30, 6.45, just close to 7. So it was an all-day affair uh, at the polling station. Insofar as to say that uh, this is going to have a long-term consequences for our city and all the stuff that we have done up to town meeting day and what are some of the key issues that were discussed and what will be what the both the council the new mayor elect what they're going to be doing upon being sworn in on april 1st this year during the organization meeting day at the town uh, the city council that being said um, a lot has happened this town meeting day that just passed uh, there are a lot of key issues that were on the ballot uh, including uh, just the new folks that were being elected. Um, there were a lot of budget, school budget that were on the ballot. There were also a tax increase that was on the ballot as well, uh, including public safety related uh, tax increase. So um, there was a lot of key important issues, but what does that mean overall to citizens of Burlington? What does the just the ability to exercise and go out there and vote and have your say and um, put your vote, as it were, behind a specific ballot that was incredibly very, very important to your fellow residents, uh, the decision makers who are the city council, uh, business owners who do invest here in the city, uh, folks who are unhoused in our city, uh, who are seeing what is happening that is on the ballot, um, folks who are suffering from a very uh, serious uh, uh, chronic, if not um, uh, disorder, as it were, substance abuse disorder, drug disorders, and other key issues that are happening in the city. How did that fare uh, during the town meeting day? Now, again, th during the next show, uh, one, one month from today, so to speak, I will have guests hopefully joining me to discuss more about town meeting day, but more importantly, to kind of go in depth, as it were, on what that meant to fellow Burlingtonians. But that being said, this has been, like I said early, a very historic uh, election. Uh, I have been a part of, this is my second town meeting day that I've been part of as, as a fellow Burlingtonians. And uh, I, I love going out there canvassing, 
speaking to uh, elected folks, uh, speaking to council members, speaking to fellow residents, and just kind of listening to what do they care about the most, what does, uh, you know, the issues that are on the ballot mean to them. Now, our city has had a, a very serious public safety issue, which was one of the key issues that was brought up multiple times before town meeting day. And uh, every candidate has provided their own version of what uh, town meeting day means to them and uh, what public safety mean, means to them. And uh, without mentioning any names, uh, of course, we, uh, we have each candidate mention what they will do should they be elected. Now that that is over and uh, we have a new mayor elect by the name Emma, uh, Mulvaney. Uh, we are hoping that the new council plus the new mayor-elect will take a path that is uh, very prudent and also that uh, addresses uh, what drove everybody as it were. From what I heard is like nearly 14,000 plus people went to the polling station to make their case for a new mayor in part because they care about public safety, they do care about uh, the substance of youth disorder that is going on. And um, just speaking in the aspect of public safety and substance of use disorder, um, what I notice is that a lot of folks are seeking a compassionate way to address the issue and speak to the truth while, of course, not rewarding bad behavior. Now, the goal that our new mayor-elect is, uh, based on what I understand, I don't want to misquote our, our historic new mayor-elect, uh, the direction the mayor, uh, new mayor-elect is going to be taking, is to address the issue but in a compassionate manner, which I think is very important for our city because we want to make sure that as we do address these issues, uh, that they're addressed in a prudent manner but also compassionately. Now, that being said, um, our city uh, is tackling with these current issues. By the way, business owners have a lot of stake in what happens uh, in our city as well uh, during this town uh, past meeting day. And when the next um, new mayor is seated, the new council is seated, it's going to be interesting to see what happens on the all the bills on the uh, propositions, uh, resolutions, as it were, that are cu currently pending in the council. When the new council takes uh, their seat on April 1st, how that is going to be uh, taken care of and uh, what the new mayor will uh, be supporting and not supporting and what the new council will be supporting and not supporting. Mind you that we do have still a, a majority democratic uh, uh, city council, as it were, but of course there was a seat that was flipped by the progressives, but nonetheless, the Democratic still uh, Democratic Party still has a majority at the council. Now, uh, there are quite a number of issues uh, that the show will focus on as it goes along in many years to come, hopefully. Uh, some of them being uh, our relations to one another in the city, how we treat each other, the relationship with the students and the city, the relationship between business and as well as the city, and how the council effectively does its work. So um, now I, I really want to thank first and foremost every person that came forward, uh, all the volunteers both on the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, as well as the independents and everybody who participated in making democracy work. The reason why I brought this show to CCTV, as it says, is people, power, and politics. And ideally, it is important to address the aspect of uh, people in public service, the politicking that goes on at council, and as well as what power that yields or uh, presents itself to the general uh, public, as it were. And this, this was one of the key reasons why I wanted to bring this show to you, so you have a say and I can share my thoughts as fellow Burlingtonians and where I, again, hopefully think of the direction that we need to take. Uh, President Obama once said that democracy 
more than any other form of government, delivers for its citizens. It's not perfect, but it works. And you could tell that through how town meeting day happened and how folks were invested. And by the way, within, uh, I would say, 10 months from now, we're going to be having the, I believe, the district councilors that will be up for seats again next year, town meeting day. So the town meeting day affair is not over, but it's definitely uh, happening. Um, so uh, now that we do have a mayor-elect, Emma Mulvaney, and that she is going to be focusing on a lot on compassionate way of delivering what is important to our city. Uh, as I said, all the key issues that I aforementioned, and as well as other minor, if not um, uh, what I would put it, a important issues such as infrastructure, um, uh, issues that have been neglected for quite a while in the city. So um, those will be great to see if the new mayor will, upon, of course, there's a difference between running for office and now being elected and being actually doing the job itself. So I will personally keenly be watching on what happens during the next council session as well as the new mayor takes their seat. But I'm genuinely hoping that neglected sites will get addressed, uh, substance abuse disorder will get addressed, and that um, we do not uh, spend our time as a city, as it were, on issues that is completely unrelated to our city. Um, and point in case, or case in point, as it said, um, <laughs> During the last uh, council session, or the current council session, actually, uh, meaning last year, December, and I believe sometime January, there was the issue that is happening over in the Middle East that was brought up twice. And so would the council bring that up again now that we have a new mayor-elect? That is yet to be seen because anything is possible in democracy. There are other contentious issues that I think galvanized very Burlingtonians, such as the VTANG uh, renewal of uh, the lease. I'd love to see more people show up at the city council meeting, hopefully watch the P3 show, as well as all other shows that are on CCTV. But I would love to see people get more galvanized about local issues that is happening in our city. And I'm hoping that the new mayor, when they take their seat, that they will be focusing on what is happening in the city as opposed to, and I hope they will put their weight behind that, uh, the mayor puts their weight behind uh, local issues more than uh, issues that is happening abroad. That's not to say that we do not live on the same planet, that we do not, that we do not have issues that are affecting uh, 5,000 miles not affect us. To a certain degree it does because Burlington is becoming much more, shall we say, a uh, diverse, place to live in and there's a lot of folks that are from Africa, from Bosnia and uh, say Latin America and in, of course in North America and in Asia that are here moving here to Burlington in a small increment as it were. So it's becoming a little bit of what I would call a melting pot in Vermont here. So that is not to put aside what is happening and have to listen to people what their concerns are. But at the same time, prioritizing what is happening right here at our doorstep will be uh, very, very uh, critically important. Now, uh, our city council um, has been a very interesting dynamic uh, setup, as it were. Um, but the new council that is taking over, and, and I've seen that there's no Republican president of the council. That is not to say that uh, you know the council that is already seated is not uh, doing their job, but I would love to see sort of a mixed uh, council that addresses mixed issues within the city. And um, in terms of presenting people having, being at these city council meetings and listening to their councilors address these issues are incredibly important. And one of the things that I've noticed when I go to the council, and again, the show is not about me, it's about you, uh, fellow resident, is that when I see these council meetings, and I know sometimes it can come across a little bit boring, and sometimes it can extend all the way to 1 a.m. in the morning, depending on what is happening, um, is that, you know, it is very, very critically important for 
citizens, residents to be there, show as much support that we show during the town meeting and to show support and be there in person uh, at the city council meetings and listen to your counselors what they're working. Of course you can do it in a hybrid manner but at the same time having you there in person goes a long way and being actively engaged. And I think some of the things that probably dissuade people from showing up in part is of course the public forum which happens which is one of my favorite parts of the city council meeting is that it gives chance for people to speak up, share their concerns with uh, city councils directly, but at the same time it's been so shortened that it's become a very, very contentious issue. But at the same time, I don't want that dissuading uh, fellow uh, Burlingtonians and uh, residents not attending these all important meetings because it gives us a chance to be there and listen and speak out and uh, you know, even after the meeting, connect with your counselor. Before the meeting, connect with them, talk to them. Don't wait until town meeting day or uh, just election to town meeting day for your chance to either hear from your counselor or counselor who's, you know, a new person that is, you know, running for that specific seat to be there. But uh, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, when it comes to the, the power of the people is when the people are present on the issues that are happening, that are being discussed at the table. And in more times I've seen that people are not there, in part maybe they're watching from their uh, you know, TV or computer at the comfort of their couch or their seat at home, but it would be great to have them at the table as people power is incredibly important. It doesn't mean that every topic that is on the council's agenda is something that you can agree on to it, but what is very, very important is that you are there, you are present, that you are listening and that you make time because most of these meetings happen after 5 p.m. all the way to say maybe 1 a.m. but in by and large it's two to three hours tops and I am certain I hope most of you can make time to come in and be there and listen and this also goes to the students of uh, our university here and uh, colleges that are here as well uh, to be part of this people power and uh, politics conversation. And um, now let me go back to town meeting day. Um, I've, like I said, I was at two polling stations and I voted because I do live in Ward 6, so I went to vote for the uh, for the part of the presidential election because I've already done my um, local election as it were through the ballots that I got in the mail and then mail that out and um, or at least dropped where it's supposed to be dropped off for it to be counted in the ballot box. Now uh, the presidential I went to go and vote at the uh, polling place but um, but then went to Ward 2 and Ward 3 because I'm part of, uh, I sit on the Democratic Party uh, committee um, team. So it was very interesting to see the level of participation and how folks that were supporting a different candidates and uh, the candidate that I was supporting at the time of the, uh, the town meeting day, how everybody came together and we were able to have a, a cordial conversation. There was no any uh, how do you say, uh, ill will feeling uh, as to, I mean there was an incident of course an individual that was passing by who flipped us off but at the end of the day uh, me and my couple of uh, uh, folks who were at the polling station spoke to the individual and said you know what this is a democracy in action and bringing uh, very ill-advised Ill, Ill behavior is not the best way to go about it on this very important day and any any day for that matter. But what really um, gave me a hope was that the fact that folks were able to come together and that we were able to stand side by side regardless of who you supported. Stand side by side and have a conversation about how you feel about the community and what everybody's doing or what is important to you in whatever chronological order that one wanted to talk about it. And that really gave me so much hope and hence why I was so looking forward to having uh, this show today to talk about it uh, regarding Tom Meeting Day. And another thing is, as I said earlier, there was, uh, you know, it was a historic, um, uh, what do you call it, participation because of course we had our current mayor for 12 years that he was uh, our mayor in our city 
but um, people wanted something different, something new, something fresh to start. That's not to say that they were running away from the current mayor, only to say that they wanted to start a fresh page. And hence, of course, every time there is a mayor election that is happening, it tends to be very uh, well participated, sometimes less, sometimes more, but more than any other, uh, what do you call it, town meeting days. It tends to be far more participated, which is fantastic. I love democracy, I love participation in what is important to our city. Um, and not to rehash everything over again, but what I'm hoping in that is our next town meeting day that when folks go and elect the next set of district councilors, whether it's back hopefully maybe incumbent, incumbent uh, city councilors or maybe new city councilors, maybe yours truly, who knows, um, that folks end up participating as equally as they did this time around because it is important not to sit back and wait until the next mayoral election comes along or maybe presidential election comes along because continued consistent participation on what is important to our city in addressing these issues is incredibly important and when we are putting folks at uh, office or position of public trust it is important to have as much participation as possible from every uh, facet of our community. So that being said, um, what I would challenge you is to uh, be able to, you know, in the near future show to call in, to have that conversation, maybe come to this show and come and talk to me and talk to uh, fellow Burlingtonians about what you see our city in the next 10 years, next five years, next two years, next three years, next one year, or two years from now, and so on and so forth. Where do you see our city, uh, you know, those amount of time? And what do you think can we work on now as well as in the future? Because there are a lot of projects that are the city is working on, such as Great Streets uh, uh, over on Main Street, uh, and uh, the South End District, and the TIF District, and so on and so forth. And of course, there are like Pearl Street, the city's, uh, the, the road is incredibly not in good shape. Part of Pine Street that is still being worked on, part of it is not in good shape. St. Paul Street is not in good shape as well. Um, infrastructure will be a, a topic for that. But, uh, but what is important to you uh, that I would invite you to come to the show and speak to me? Of course, you can contact uh, the uh, station and you can contact me on my Instagram which is basically at my name as you see on the screen Instagram at my name and so on so um, I would more than happy to invite you you can email me I'm on front porch forum as well and I would love to hear from fellow Burlingtonians this is this show is for you this is literally the first show that I'm doing I'll be doing subsequently this a specific show and I would love to see participation where folks come in like a neighborhood we talk about multiple subjects from the mayor elect to the city council to infrastructure to substance of use disorder to you name it a lot of stuff that is happening in our city it is a people power and politics show it is about you it's about the, um, the, the, the power that the council has in deciding what is important because one of the key issues that happen as I do remember uh, late, late last year, and actually this year, was that um, you know Burlingtonians collected signatures on an issue they care about, though no lo though not local issue, but nonetheless it was an issue where enough folks got uh, signatures for it to bring before the council, and it didn't pass the council in part because the council, I believe, through the state have. A, a some kind of a, a um, how do you put it a uh, an understanding that not everything can make to the ballot based on specific conditions that has to be met not just signature but specific additional conditions that need to be met uh, so I want to get more feedback from uh, fellow Burlingtonians who participated in getting the signatures for the item ballot that didn't pass uh, in January and what, uh, what your thought process is and 
would this be an issue that will come back or maybe get a signature ballot for an additional issue that, you know, that one hopes that it will pass at the council. So I would love to invite folks to come in and express their views, either of course calling in or uh, showing up in person because this, is, this show is for you. It's not about me, it's for you. It's about us as it were. And I would love to talk about a lot about it. And um, of course, um, getting back uh, to the topic of the show, Town Meeting Day, um, during my conversation with multiple uh, residents as well as um, the folks that run for city council and the mayor, mayor elect, and uh, uh, the you know the the people that run for the mayor, as it were, um, I've learned something very important, and it, you know. What I learned is that it's not important that, that you run, but it's important what you run on, what the topic that you are running on. Is this something that was well received? Was there opportunities that were missed that one could have made to the residents? And of course, this time we had, a, you know, we have folks who are not U.S. citizens who ran on local elections that I understand. And have we, you know, the folks that were running, did they make their case to the residents as what they wanted to do? And so it is really very, very interesting thing that I learned that it's important to get the message across in a balanced manner where uh, the one does not come across very, very polarizing, but at the same time does not come across that they do not care what matters to the city what matters to residents, in part because some folks were not for having people camp on public spaces and other people feel maybe a candidate or candidates, as it were, may be taking very much more stricter measures when addressing public safety or uh, substance abuse disorder or having a um, uh, nail, uh, what do you call it, uh, injection sites uh, for, uh, I believe it's called safe recovery centers. Um, but some people might not see as that and end up voting for one person and somebody might see that as some that is maybe help us with ending or maybe at least slowing down the amount of people that maybe, uh, you know, using needles at public bathrooms or um, locations even out in the open in the public. So those are the issues that I have learned uh, personally during this past down meeting day. and. I think the only thing that I could say um, during, you know, leading up to town meeting day is that it happens during very cold months of the year. <laughs> so, and maybe that gives a little bit more, you know, oomph to, for people to come out, maybe not, but it's incredible this past meeting day, uh, how things did happen and the level of enthusiasm, but also as it ended, there was a little bit of fatigue and I could hear some folks saying, I'm glad that it's all said and done and over, but <laughs> but the important thing is, you know, that it, at least it gave us a chance to be able to uh, have our say and us being able to go out and support the candidate that we wanted to support, but also after all said and done, be able to turn the page and say, you know what, we need to come around to everybody that got elected, everybody that have been given the chance to represent our city and be before us, give them all the support that they need to get their job done. We may not agree what they have to say during the council meetings or some of the issues that they're gonna be voting on, but that is where the next town meeting day is there for, so you can elect either a new person if you are happy with the existing councilors, just the new slates that have been elected, uh, to name a few, if I can remember the names on top of my head. Um, Ward 8, I believe we have somebody from the Progressive Party. I don't know his name on the top of my head, so I do apologize. Um, Ward 6, Becca McKnight, congratulations on being elected. And you definitely deserve it. You are a hardworking person, and this is a well-deserved uh, election and uh, thank you for coming forward and representing our ward. Uh, ward 5, of course, the uh, incumbent, uh, Ben Travis, congratulations on being re-elected. You are a champion for our city and I am very, very glad that you are there for us as a city, not just for Ward 5, but as a city 
that we have a steady hand in the council. And I suspect, I hope I'm not wrong, but I suspect you're going to be the next council president. Again, I'm just saying that might be the case because I have a hinge that's going to happen. Now, that being said, of course, we have Ward 4. I'm not wrong. I think it might be a Sarah Carpenter. Uh, I hope I'm not wrong. Sarah Carpenter, Ward 4. And, um, yeah, she is also a very solid candidate that is uh, representing the ward, and she's, she's, she's incredibly amazing. And some of you may or may not agree, but uh, she is an incredible person. I can't wait to see her back at the council, and I uh, look forward to listening intently what Councilor Carpenter has to say. I believe Ward 3 is Joe Kane, I believe. And I think, you know, Joe, is, I, I got to learn a little bit of him, and I think he's really a great guy, uh, wonderful things he's going to be bringing to the council. Um, and and I, I can't wait to see what he does for his ward, but the city at large. And uh, this is very important because it doesn't matter if you're a progressive or a Democrat. At the end of the day, you do represent the city. And I'm hoping that once he comes to the council on April 1st, that he will work very closely with other councillors uh, that are in the Democratic Party or the uh, Progressive Party, and that he will um, councillor uh, councillor elect, as it were, uh, Joe Kane. I hope I'm not saying I hope I'm saying the name right. That will represent uh, Ward Three um, fabulously, as it were. Now, uh, Ward Two, of course, is the incumbent. Um, Gene Berkman. I said his name wrong in the past, so I hope I didn't do that again. Um, this guy is a star. He's fantastic, and I think he's going to do amazing work, as he's done in the past, for the city. Again, he's uh, the people power kind of guy, and I think he's going to do such a fantastic job. And I can't wait to see Council Berkman, what he does again for this tenure again uh, after... April 1st, after he gets uh, re-sworn in back to his post, it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see it. He's a good man, and he's going to be representing that ward fabulously. Now, Ward 1, we do have a Carter, Carter, I believe, um, and I believe he did run in the past, but this time he got uh, elected. Congratulations, Carter. Well deserved, and I think you've come a long way to be where you're at today, and I couldn't be more grateful to... Uh, have you as our city councilor uh, for Ward 1. I don't live in Ward 1, but congratulations to you uh, on your win and that uh, every councilor who's been elected needs to be welcomed irrespective of what party you're at. And, uh, and I hope that as you get into and settle into this position that you would represent the voices of everybody and not just specifically Ward 1. And, of course, it's not a district council election this time around, but it was just ward election and the mayor election. And I would like to, very importantly, uh, thank uh, both uh, Joan, Shannon, um, and Emma Mulvaney, as well as, let me not forget, uh, Chris Hasley and Will Emmons, who ran for the mayoral election. Uh, Will ran as an independent. Chris, who's a good friend of mine, Ran, who, who also sits, by the way, on the Church Street Marketplace Commission, which I sit on as well, on the Church Street Marketplace Commission, did run as an independent candidate. And Joan, of course, ran the Democratic Party, which I'm a member of the Democratic Party, uh, and as well as Emma Mulvaney Stanek, who ran in the Progressive Party. I think everybody, everybody, let me say so, ran a very fantastic uh, election campaign, and I cannot thank enough to all the participants who were part of this all-important election, and I cannot thank enough to all the volunteers who went knocking doors, who made calls for every single candidate, who went out of their way to do a lot of posts on Front Porch Forum, on um, Reddit, on Facebook, on Instagram, you name it. That is people power. And this is what this is for, to be able to share and discuss how important that was, not only just for me, but for, I'm sure, for 
every one of you, irrespective of who you supported. I think this was incredibly, very, very, very important town meeting day. Not to forget the president, pres presidential election that was also happening, the primaries. We had uh, you know, former President Trump, who was on the Democratic ticket, or rather, sorry, the Republican ticket, along with Nikki Haley. And I think there were others who already dropped out, but they were on it as well. And you had, on, of course, on the Democratic side, uh, President uh, Joe Biden, and you had additional candidates that were running as well. So in all in all, I believe uh, for our current president, Joe Biden won for the Democratic ticket for the primaries, for the Democratic, of course, side. And then you had, of course, the Republican uh, Nikki Haley won in our state. And though she dropped out right after Super Tuesday uh, this past uh, March 5th, um, 2024, uh, presidential primaries. So the presidential election will come up November 5th, I believe. And um, if uh, the word would hold, I think President, uh, former President Trump will, may or may not be, uh, uh, you know, by then uh, running. I mean, he, he didn't win our state, but nonetheless, in the general election, he may be end up uh, the person that will be representing the uh, Republican Party as things are going. Of course, we'll probably be having a President Biden for the Democratic Party. So it's going to more or less look like 2020 presidential election uh, that is happening. And rest assured, it's going to be a year to remember this year. And I did say at the top of this year during the New Year's, I said this is going to be a very, uh, what do you call it, an inflection point year where a lot is going to happen between then and now that will... Uh, be on the history books, uh, especially in knowing that we have a very polarizing individuals that are running for the presidential election. But also we did have, you know, during the town meeting day, a to somewhat uh, folks that were somewhat polarizing. But at the same time, um, depending on how you look at the, the word polarizing, um, some folks felt one person was polarizing, the other not polarizing. But I suspect that this year is going to be, some, some, for some folks anyway, upsetting, but others for a meaningful year. But I will end on this, um, that I am incredibly grateful that uh, you have a chance to see this first show. This is the first for this show, and um, that uh, you can participate. Uh, we're going to have in the future the phone that's going to be showing hopefully in the, at the bottom on the, uh, the banner. Uh, hopefully that you'll be able to call in. Hopefully we'll have a dedicated um, you know, 20, 30 minutes maybe, who knows, uh, where folks can call in and uh, speak and maybe come into, into, into the studio with me on, on that Saturday. It's going to be once a month Saturday, the second Saturday of the month. Come into the studio with me. Contact me on Instagram if you can. Uh, which is, uh, you know, Instagram slash my full name. And, or you can just, go, you know, check my name on Instagram and then just send me a DM, as it were. And I can invite you to the show or shoot me an email and uh, on my uh, uh, email as well. I, I rather prefer that <laughs> uh, somebody contacts me on Instagram. Uh, this way I know who is contacting me and I don't get unnecessary random email um, or spamming, as it were. But... Long story short, uh, this is the first show. I'm grateful to CCTV for having me have this show and be able to share my thoughts on town meeting day. And I would love to hear from you definitely in the subsequent uh, shows uh, once a month, the second day of every uh, month, the second Saturday rather of every month, uh, to hear what your thoughts are not only on town meeting day but our city. Uh, about the show, about your neighborhood specifically, whether you're in the south end, whether you are in the north end, whether you are in downtown district, whether you are the east district. I would love to hear from you uh, in the near future and share, you know, share your thoughts on everything. I'll end on this. Thank you for watching. And uh, as, as I said in the past, democracy is an act. Be part of it. People power politics is about democracy. And thank you for watching, and I look forward to uh, sharing uh, more to come in the next uh, subsequent uh, shows. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.